Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our previous tutorials, we discussed the anatomy of hip bone and femur. So we will continue our discussion of the osteology of lower limb. And so we will move on to the anatomy of our next bone of the lower limb. And that's the patella bone. So there are two patella bones in the body. So this one is the right while this one is the left patella bone. So we will zoom in the right patella bone in order to discuss all the important anatomical features of patella. So you can see that the patella or kneecap is a bone found in the knee region anterior to the knee joint. And it is somewhat triangular in shape and is classified as the largest sesamite bone in the body. So a sesamite bone is a bone which is embedded within the tendon of a muscle. So as the patella is a sesamite bone, so it is embedded within the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle. So let me show you the quadriceps femoris muscle and its tendon. So now in this model we have the quadriceps muscle and its tendon. So this hole is the quadriceps muscle. And this one is the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle within which the patella bone is formed. And you can also see this ligament or tendon which is called as the patellar ligament. And this patellar ligament is the inferior continuation of the quadriceps tendon. So the patellar ligament extends from the apex of the patella down to the tibial tuberosity. So now we will remove all the other structures in this model and we will take just one of the two patella bones in order to discuss all the bony features of patella. So now we are having an anterior view of this right patella bone and you can see that this time this bone is colored in different colors. So you need to know that these colors show the different surfaces of this bone. So let's talk about each of these surfaces. So in the most superior region of this bone, you can see this thick blunt proximal edge of the bone, which is the base of patella. And the base of patella provides an attachment site for the quadriceps tendon. And then if we look at the inferior region of this bone, so you can see this thin tapered distal edge of the bone, which is the apex of patella. And we already know that the apex of patella provides an attachment site for the patellar ligament. So in between the apex and base of patella, you can see this rough convex area on the outer surface of the bone, which is the anterior surface of patella. And it is one of the two surfaces of the patella, the other being the articular posterior surface, which we will discuss in a moment. So these are the surfaces which we can appreciate from an anterior view of this bone. So there are other surfaces of this bone which we can appreciate from a medial, a lateral and a posterior view of this bone. So if we rotate this bone to a medial view, so we would be able to have a look at this marginal surface of patella, which is the medial border of patella. And the medial border of patella provides an insertion site for the vastus medialis muscle. So that's a medial view of this bone. And after this, we need to rotate this bone all the way to a lateral view so that we would be able to have a look at this marginal surface, which is the lateral border of patella. And you need to know that the lateral border of patella provides an insertion site for the vastus lateralis muscle. So I think it is easy to memorize that the medial border of patella provides an insertion site for the vastus medialis muscle, while the lateral border of patella provides an insertion site for the vastus lateralis muscle. So now let's rotate this bone this time to a posterior view in order to have a look at this smooth concave area on the inner aspect of the bone which is the articular or posterior surface of patella. And the articular surface of patella articulates with the distal end of the femur, forming the patellofemoral joint. So here one thing you need to know is that this articular surface of patella consists of a vertical ridge, 
which divides it into unequal medial and lateral articular facets. So let me divide this articular surface of patella into vertical ridge, medial and lateral articular facets. So now you can see that the colors have been changed and now these colors show the division of the articular surface of patella into vertical ridge, medial and lateral articular facets. So this vertical linear elevation is the vertical ridge of patella. And this vertical ridge of patella articulates with the groove of the patellar surface of femur, contributing to the formation of the patellofemoral joint. And just medial to this vertical ridge, you can see this smooth concave area, which is the medial articular facet of patella. And the medial articular facet of patella articulates with the articular facet of medial condyle of femur contributing to the formation of the patellofemoral joint. And then if you look laterally to the vertical ridge, you will be able to see this smooth concave area, which is the lateral articular facet of patella. And the lateral articular facet of patella articulates with the articular facet of lateral condyle of femur. And so it contributes to the formation of the patellofemoral joint. So overall, all these three surfaces contribute together to the formation of the patellofemoral joint. So lastly, let me show you the way the patella articulates with the femur and forms the patellofemoral joint. So we are having a lateral view and I hope that you can appreciate that the posterior articular surface of patella is forming patellofemoral joint with the femur through its vertical ridge medial and lateral articular facets. So that was all about the anatomy of patella bone. So if you have any confusion in what we studied, you can ask me in the comments section. Thank you so much.